Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are working in Chapter 18, which is about chemical equilibrium. And today we're going to be talking about shifting equilibrium. So Le Chatelier's principle states that if a system at equilibrium is disrupted, it will shift to reduce uh, that disruption and to reestablish the new equilibrium. So a stress on the system will result in a shift to remove the stress. And those disruptions could include changes in the reactant or product concentration, remembering that those brackets refer to molarity, moles per liter. If it is a gas phase reaction, changes in the volume of the reaction container will have a stressful uh, result and temperature changes and temperature changes particularly when we're talking about um, exothermic and endothermic reactions. So for a reactant or product concentration with a system at equilibrium when the concentration of a reactant or product is increased the equilibrium will shift to consume whatever is added. And so the equilibrium will shift either to the left or to the right. When the concentration of a reactant or product is removed, again, the equilibrium will shift to produce more of whatever was removed. And so again, it will shift either to the left or to the right. So if we have the reaction A plus B yields C plus D, they're all in the gas phase. Adding reactant will shift things to the right to form products. Adding product on this side would shift it back to the left to produce more uh, of the reactants, so the reverse direction. Removing reactant will shift it to the left. Again, it'll form more reactant. And removing product would result in it shifting toward the product direction. Note that changes in concentration have no effect on the value of the equilibrium constant. Although there's new concentrations, they're going to eventually result in the same value of the equilibrium constant once re the equilibrium is reestablished. And remember, this whole thing about Le Chatelier's principle is that a stress to the system will result in the equilibrium being reestablished, and hence no change in the value of the equilibrium constant. So here's an example. Consider the following system at equilibrium. So this is carbon monoxide plus oxygen to produce carbon dioxide. Predict the effect of the following changes when the system is initially in a state of equilibrium and assume that the reaction container volume is constant. So we don't have to worry about that since this is gas phase. So if carbon dioxide is added to the system, what would happen? If oxygen is added to the system, what will happen? If carbon monoxide gas is removed, what will happen? So here's our reaction again. And if carbon dioxide gas is added, that is a product. You could expect the increase in product will result in a shift to the left to reduce that. That means that the concentration of the carbon dioxide would decrease and that the carbon monoxide and oxygen would increase. If we were to add oxygen, which is a reactant, then we would expect a shift to the right to form products. That would mean that the concentration of carbon dioxide would increase and carbon monoxide and oxygen would decrease. And if we were to remove carbon monoxide, which is a reactant, we would expect it to shift to the left again to form more reactants. And so we would expect then that the concentration of carbon dioxide would decrease and carbon monoxide and oxygen would increase. So let's talk about temperature. Temperature is going to depend on whether it's exothermic or endothermic. So we'll start with endothermic. So in an endothermic reacts, reaction such as this, heat is on the reactant side because we need to add heat to get it to react. An increase in temperature will shift toward the right, toward the formation of product, because that would then result in a um, reduction in this stress to reestablish equilibrium. So if you're shifting it to form more products, then the value of the KEQ will increase because products are in the numerator in our KEQ expression. 
if we were to decrease the temperature, now our reaction is going to shift left. That means there's more reactant concentration, and so the value of the KEQ is going to decrease, remembering that reactants are in the denominator of the equilibrium expression. For an exothermic reaction, so here's our exothermic reaction, and heat is written on the product side because exothermic reactions produce heat. An increase in temperature is going to shift toward the left. That means that the reactants will be increasing, and so as a result, the KEQ would decrease, remembering reactants are in the denominator. The denominator is getting bigger, the value is going to go down. And if we were to decrease the temperature, that would shift things toward the right to produce more heat. And since that would produce more products, products are in the numerator, the value of the equilibrium constant would increase. Note, equilibrium constants are listed for specific temperatures because changing the temperature will change the relative amounts of reactants and products. So how about pressure? A change in pressure really only affects equilibrium systems that include substances in the gas phase. And it's really only when the total number of moles of gas on the left side is different from the total number of moles of gas on the right side. That's when a change in pressure will have an effect on your equilibrium. Similar to changes in concentration, though, changes in pressure will not affect the value of the equilibrium constant because equilibrium will be reestablished. So now let's look at a Le Chatelier worksheet. So <clears throat> this is for the gas phase reaction of nitrogen plus hydrogen to produce ammonia. This is the Haber process. It is exothermic. Heat is produced. So here are our stresses adding or removing or increasing or decreasing things. And here is the effects that they will have. If we add nitrogen, which is a reactant, we can expect the equilibrium to shift toward products to the right. That means that the um, hydrogen concentration will decrease, and in general when we're doing these, we don't worry about the one that we were stressing. We would expect concentration of ammonia to increase, and the K will remain the same because changes in concentration don't affect the equilibrium constant value. If we add ammonia, we're going to shift it to the left toward reactants. That means our reactants concentration would increase. Uh, we're talking about ammonia here. And again, the KEQ is not affected by changes in concentration. If we remove nitrogen, we're moving, removing reactant. We're going to shift left to form more reactant. That means that hydrogen will increase, ammonia will decrease, and again, changes in concentration don't change the K value. Now, this is an exothermic reaction. If we increase the temperature, then it's going to shift to the left to reduce that temperature change. And so we could expect increases in the reactant concentrations, a decrease in the product concentration. And in this case, if the product concentration decreases, products are in the numerator, then we can expect, excuse me, if we are shifting it toward the left, then we are increasing the number of uh, concentration of the reactants, which are in the denominator. If the denominator is getting larger, the K value will decrease. And if we increase the pressure, it's going to change things to the right. Now let's look at this. On this side, the reactant side, we have 1 plus 3, 4 moles. And on the product side, we only have 2 moles. So if we increase the pressure, shifting toward the right reduces the number of moles of gas. If we reduce the number of moles of gas, we will reduce the pressure. So it will shift to the right. That means that our reactant concentrations will decrease, our product concentration will increase, and remember that changes in pressure do not change the value of the KEQ. Now let's look at an endothermic reaction. So uh, energy is on the 
reactant side because this is endothermic. This is a gas phase reaction. Um, so here is our little table. Again, here are our stressors, and then here's the effect. So if we add hydrogen, hydrogen is a reactant. We're going to shift to the right. That means that the concentration of iodine will decrease and hydrogen iodide will increase. No effect on the equilibrium constant because it's a concentration change. If we add product, it will shift to the left to reform reactants. That means hydrogen and iodine will increase, and this is our stressor, and again, the KEQ remains the same. If we remove one of the reactants, in this case hydrogen, it will shift to the left to reform it. That means that we can expect an increase in iodine concentration, decrease in the hydrogen iodide, and again, concentration changes do not change the value of the KEQ. Now if we increase the temperature here, this is an endothermic reaction. If we increase the temperature, it's going to shift it to the right to reduce that stress. That means that hydrogen and iodine concentration reactants will decrease, product concentration will increase. If the product concentration increases, then the value of the equilibrium constant increases because that is increase in the numerator. If we change the pressure of this system, now look, we have one, two moles of reactant, two moles of product. The number of moles of gas are the same on each side. That means a change in pressure will have no effect on the equilibrium. It will not shift it. That means the concentrations of reactants will not be changed, the concentration of product will not be changed, and the equilibrium constant will also be the same. So I hope this helps you a little bit with understanding Le Chatelier's principle and how to do these worksheets. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.